Hello class, thanks for joining me in my video on Introduction to Windows Clustering. Now there's more than one clustering product out there. There's Linux, Unix, Windows, all has their own clustering products. There's also a new Azure product that does clustering. Now the Azure product for clustering is different from this. This is more, this more has to do with on-premises clustering, virtual machine clustering, and it can be hosted in Azure on a virtual machine using Hyper-V. However, it's not the same as the Azure clustering. So let's try to make sure we keep those separate. So let's talk about the Windows 2019 clustering and what is clustering? Well, applications and file shares, they need to be highly available. So let's say that you've got a server and it's serving out file shares to all your users. Guess what, the server goes down, what do you do? Well, you tell everybody, sorry, it's down until you get it back up but that's not gonna be an acceptable answer, right? So you've got to have uh, an extra server for redundancy, at least one, maybe two or three, and you've got to have it highly available. Highly available means that it will automatically fail over to another server without any user intervention. And that's what Windows clustering does. It offers both redundancy and high availability. Windows clusters, uh, clustering shares storage between servers and we change the name of servers. Once you join those servers into a cluster, they're no longer called servers. They're called nodes. And one of the reasons for, the, for that is, is because you could have a mixture of various different types of servers and uh, you don't want to refer to servers by specific server name or anything like that. You want to be calling them nodes. And that's because nodes are just basically a cog in a wheel. They no longer are the single point of failure they are just one of many different points of failures. And this will give you that redundancy and high availability. Storage can't be normally shared due to corruption. So basically that means is that if I have a, a storage device, such as a, a SAN, and I want that to be connected to multiple different servers, I'll corrupt that data by connecting them to multiple different servers. And so Windows clustering keeps that from happening. Uh, it, it keeps servers from corrupting data when you want to share data between multiple different servers now called nodes. And I'll demonstrate that so that way there's no confusion on how that works. All right, many different applications can be clustered. So uh, you may be asking yourself, is it just file shares that can be clustered? No, a lot of different things can be clustered. We can cluster virtual machines and I'm going to demonstrate that in an upcoming video. We can cluster DHCP, which is you know, one of the many different applications we can cluster. File shares, of course, and there's more than one way to cluster file shares. There is your basic uh, file share clustering and then there's your scale out file share clustering. And by the way, that shows up on a lot of different uh, Microsoft certification tests. So you'll need to know the difference uh, between that. Now, if you create a custom application, you'd like to uh, make that highly available, you can do that as well. We can cluster that as well as many other applications. And I'll show you what all those are. So we have this thing in a cluster called a witness. And a witness can be a disk, it could be a hard drive, it could be a you know, partition, it could be a file share on another server, it could be a lot of different things. And we need to have these witnesses when we have an even amount of nodes. So for instance, you have uh, two nodes. The problem is, is these nodes might be saying to each other, I'm, you know, I'm in charge, no, I'm in charge. And it's just like little kids fighting. So uh, what we need is a parent, in this case, called a witness. And this witness will break any ties between nodes. Uh, the witness and remaining nodes, they vote. And uh, the, everybody gets a single vote. And once the votes are added up, they decide who's gonna be in charge of an application or a file share. So the nodes take up the application and then serves the client. And things continue on just as they should. So some things to note about Windows clustering, the witness is not necessary if you have an odd amount of servers. So if for uh, you know, some reason you don't just have two nodes, you have three nodes, four nodes, five nodes, if it's an odd number, then you don't need a witness because that odd number will be fine in doing a vote. You're not gonna have a tie. That's what you're trying to avoid. Uh, nodes use the shared name. So let's say in our example, which I'm going to show you in a demonstration, we've got file server one and we've got file server two. Now, file server one is going to just respond to requests for file shares or applications uh, to the name file server one. And file server two will do the same for itself. 
So what we need in order to make applications highly available is to create a special cluster name and add it into our DNS manager, which I'll show you in a demonstration, that both or as many nodes as you have will all respond to. So maybe your domain is a widget.internal and we create a cluster name for file server one and file server two called cluster. So it'll be cluster.widgetllc.internal. So all of the, say, Windows 10 clients, when they go to uh, connect to a file share, say, on file uh, server one and two, then both of those file servers would respond. So who's ever in charge will be the one that takes the request, but then if that server goes down, then the other server will take that request. There's more than one type of storage in clustering. There's basic storage, and then there's cluster shared volumes. So what basic storage does is, uh, as far as file sharing goes, is let's say that you connect to a SAN device on file server one, and uh, this SAN device serves up your clients on the G drive. Then let's say your file server two, which is node number two, uh, gets called upon to serve the clients because node one, file server one, goes down. So what happens is that G drive dismounts from node one and it mounts on node two, which is file server two. That's basic clustering. There's a fancier type of clustering called cluster shared volumes. And what that does is it, uh, uh, it mounts the data in both servers at the same time. And you can use one or the other. The uh, basic storage uh, does basic file sharing, the cluster storage does the scale out file sharing. And they both have their advantages and disadvantages, which we will talk about in these upcoming demonstrations and videos. Now I want to show you a little bit about how our lab is going to be set up. Uh, you, these could be physical nodes or virtual nodes, doesn't matter, or a combination. So in our case, they're going to be Hyper-V 2019 servers. Now you can use standard or data center. I'm using data center, uh, but th this works perfectly fine on the standard version. So we have node one, so node one is going to connect into a virtual switch, and in your case it may be a physical switch, if it's physical servers that you're using, and node two is gonna connect into the switch. So now they can talk to each other on using this heartbeat, right? So they can make sure that both of them are talking and both of them are alive, and if one goes down, we know the other one's gonna pick up. Now we're also going to connect into this shared storage, which is called a storage area network device. Now in my case, I'm using what's called an iSCSI target. This is a Windows feature that can be added to a Windows 2019 and 2016 server. And so this target, I'm going to set up a uh, secure connection using CHAP, Challenge Authentication Protocol, and say that only these two nodes can communicate with this storage. So that way, nobody else can just connect to these nodes without any type of authentication. So these two nodes will have Windows failover clustering installed on them. They'll connect to this storage, and then we will add in applications, file shares, scale out file shares, all different types of things in different videos. So what I'm gonna do for you is I'm gonna create a playlist. And in this playlist will be a whole bunch of different demonstrations. I think that works much better than one giant long video where maybe you only need to see 15 minutes of an hour or two hour video. So uh, I'll break them down into 10 minute or less videos in general. You'll be able to pick out which videos you want from the playlist to help you in what you're doing, uh, but you can always come back to this video to see how the lab is set up in case you need it. So please leave comments about various different things you may want to see uh, or things you may want to see changed and I'll be happy to accommodate you on that. I look forward to getting this playlist going for you and getting you set up in Windows clustering uh, because it really is a great feature that Windows offers.